Hey TD Superheroes, I'm Alejandro Perez, your sidekick, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at strings and some of the cool things we can do with strings in Python and Maya. And towards the end of this tutorial, we're also going to look at building a simple tool with strings to be able to use strings inside of Maya practically. Okay, so let's take a look at what we are working with. So, strings. We're day five of this tutorial series. We are looking at strings, and this is an example of a string. This is a string. A lot of programming languages use strings with the double quotes the way we have it here. Python also accepts single quote strings, and typically this is what you'll see there's some variation between the two, but a lot of the time you'll see that people in Python are using single quotes, and that's usually kind of considered the standard, but you can technically use either or. One example that you might want to use a double quote for is if you need to use a single quote inside of a string, because if you were to do this with single quotes, you'll see that it breaks up the string and it doesn't give us the expected result. Here is an example of using the inverse of that. So we're going to use the single quotes on the inside and be able to use the double quotes. We're using the single quotes on the outside and the double quotes on the inside. Python also accepts multi-line strings and this is what a multi-line string would look like. You need the triple quotes and so you need these three triple quotes and then you can do a multi-line string then you can do this also with the triple quotes like this using three quotes but with the single quote character you can use some of the operators that we we're looking at with numbers yesterday with strings. So if you wanted to be able to stitch strings together, you can do what is called concatenation with the plus symbol here. So here we're adding the string this plus a space plus is and then concatenation. So let's set this up as a print statement. And if we run this now, you will see that it says this is concatenation. So you can see why we added the space here to be able to include the space, because if we don't do that, it's not going to automatically add a space for us. So if we fix that, you will see that we can get a readable string or a sentence that way using concatenation. You can also do multiplication, and in this case we're actually using a number with a string, and if we print this value, you will see that we get triple, triple, triple. So if we wanted it to actually be spaced, we can do at a space, and you can see it says triple, triple, triple. Technically there's a space here at the end, you can see when I highlight it, because we added that space there. Let's take a look at formatting strings with escape characters. So escape characters start off with a backslash. So in this case, the escape character that we're using right now is the backslash n. That is a new line. So if we run this, you can see that it outputs a new line for each. And I forgot a space here. Let's do that and try it again. Oops. There we go. You can see that we get line one, line two, line three, and we're doing that by using this escape character, the backslash n. The next escape character that we'll look at is tab, that's backslash t. So if we do that, you can see that it indents your string. Earlier, we talked about using mixing the quote types to be able to add a single quote inside of a double quote, but you can also use that with an escape character. So we can see that we use the backslash and the quote symbol 
and we can actually include it inside of a string that is using single quotes. We can do the same thing with the double quotes. So you can use the backslash and put a quote symbol in there. So this is the escape character that we're using here. And we get the double quote. You can see that it prints out that statement there. And if we want to use a backslash, we have to do double backslashes, which will give us the escape character to use a backslash. And we can run this and you can see adding a backslash. Okay, let's take a look at formatting with F strings. So the basic structure of that is that you need a variable. So let's do var equals test and num equals three. And we're going to print F. So that's how we start an F string. We put an F, then we start the quote, and then we can say, var is, and then we're going to open up and close curly brackets. We can put a variable in there, and then we can say, and num is num. We can close the quote there, and then close it. And so you can see that it puts everything inside of the string. Let's print this value here. And I didn't add a space. So that's kind of put together. Let's do that again. And we can see that it prints out var is test and num is three. So if we change this value here, and it doesn't have to be a string, we can actually use a numeric value. So let's change that there. And we can do that and it still works. In the past when we were just trying to concatenate things and we were using the plus, if we put a integer value in a string trying to concatenate it, it doesn't know what to do. But in this case, if we use the formatting using the F string, it will automatically detect that it needs to turn it into a string and then we can use that in there and we can change it to any value. So if we run this again, you can see var is value and num is three. Now we can expand this to do a a little bit longer version and we can actually use escape characters also. So, oops. Here is a little example. We can have names Sir Lancelot to seek the Holy Grail and blue. If you've seen Monty Python quest for the Holy Grail, you kind of know what this is. Then I have the quote and then we're separating things with the escape character, new line. Let's take a look at printing it because this is actually quite a long line here. You can see it's a whole kind of mini dialogue. You can run it and we can see that when it prints, we have each one of the values. So the bridge keeper, what it says, the answer from Sir Lancelot, and we go continue forth. So if I were to say, my name is Alejandro, then to be your sidekick, my favorite color is green. We run this and you can see that it updates that information on each one of the lines. Using the S-strings, we have the curly brackets here and um, are able to kind of feed information into this string. Okay, let's take a look at some built-in functions in Python that are useful in using Python with or strings in Python. So here we're going to convert an object to a string, kind of like what we did with numbers with int and float. We can convert something to a string and be able to output it. Okay, for the next set of Examples, we're going to be using a string. Python is fun. We can get the length of the string. So the length is the number of characters. White spaces are considered characters. So 
if we do this and we print it, you can see it gives us a number right now. It gives us the number 28. That's how many characters. So that includes the letters and the spaces. All of that is considered as part of the length. Now we can use the strip function. So we add the variable string to the strip function and we run this and you can see that it removes the leading white spaces so we don't include this anymore. If we were just to print the string by itself you will see that we do have those leading spaces and it removes the leading spaces and the spaces at the end so which are the trailing spaces so make sure that if you do have an option to be able to do that you can we can even at this point let's say we wanted to keep that value let's say string so we're going to rewrite the value of string and we're just going to strip the white spaces from the beginning and end so i'm just going to copy this and paste it and then we can just print string so now we can see that it gives us that value okay we can go ahead and do a string value here where we change everything to lowercase so let's try that so you can see that when we print that value everything is lowercase we can do the opposite and create an uppercase version of this. Okay, let's say we, here I'm going to reassign this, but I'm going to say it's lower now. And let's print string. And here we can see Python is fun. And let's do the next version, which is capitalize so we can see that it capitalizes the first character in our string now if we wanted it to kind of be capitalizing each one of the letters we can actually do kind of like title casing so you can see that it does each one of the individual words as a capitalized word we can also replace things. So we have this function here, replace. We can replace with fun and easy. So now when we print it, we can see that it shows Python is fun. Wait a minute. Oh, I see why that didn't work. It is because we changed this to lowercase. So let's remove this one now because we don't need it lowercase anymore. And if we run this now, you can see that I'll switch it because it is case sensitive. So if we were looking for fun here and we replaced it with easy, if it's lowercase and this is looking for the capital case version, it will cause an issue. So that is something to watch out for. We can also split string. It's going to actually create a list. We'll be talking about lists more tomorrow, but if we split string here, basically it creates a list with each one of the words based off of the string that we created, a single element within that list. Right now, the reason that's working is because I'm splitting it based off of a space. So you can see inside of the quotes, I have a space. If I wanted to, let's say Python is fun and we had underscores like that and we tried to replace it, you can see that it doesn't separate it. But if we use that underscore character and run it, we get that same kind of split effect that we were looking for. Okay, let's build a simple Maya script. And here we are going to import maya.cmds as MC. Then we want to get the selection from the scene. So we're going to create an object. Let's create it now. We're going to create a joint here. 
So it's called Joint 1, and it's currently selected. So we want to be able to get that selection. This puts it into a list. Like I said, we'll talk more about lists tomorrow, but if we want the first item in the list, we're only going to work with one item right now. We put a zero in brackets. So now let's create a variable. We're going to call it hip. And we're going to rename that object. Maya has a rename function. So we can actually rename the object by doing the original object's name, then the new name. So we have the object selected. Let's try this now and run it. And we can see that it renamed our joint to hip. I'm going to undo that so that way we go back to the joint function there. And let's add a little print statement at the end. So that way we can see our example here. So the original name was joint one and the new name is hip. You can see that it renames it there. I'm going to undo just to go back to the original name. And let's say we wanted to make sure that the whatever the new name was is capitalized. So oops, let's add that here. So I'm going to replace the rename script and now I'm using rename and capitalize. So let's run this. And we have an issue because I didn't add a open close parenthesis. So that's the actual function. If you don't do that, it's going to give you kind of a address. And that's what we got there. So let's try this again. <laughs> and we can see that now we have a capitalized hip. Right in here, it doesn't show it correctly because we just capitalized it here. So that's fine. You can update that if you wanted to as a variable. I'm going to get rid of this line just because my next few examples are not going to include that. Now I want to go in and add a prefix. I'm just going to capitalize this here. And basically I want to be able to add the new prefix with an F string. So we're going to have two variables, the name and the prefix that we're going to be adding to that. So if we run this, we can see that we have center hip. We can do the same thing. So let me control Z to go back to the original name and run this here. Now we have a prefix and a suffix. So we're adding the center and we're adding the joint. And in this case, I'm also using a function here on the suffix where I capitalize the whole suffix using the upper command. So this can be used in the future where you want to add prefixes to like your joint chain or add suffixes to them, be able to rename things. Right now we have to do them one at a time, but in the future, once we go in and add, learn a little bit more Python, we can actually do a whole joint chain all at the same time or any selection that we wanted to be able to add a prefix suffix or rename the object we can use that using strings the way we are here. All right, so if you guys want to learn more of this, I also have a companion series on my other channel, CGI Nerd, which is learning Python in Houdini. So if you want to go there, check out the link in the description. Other than that, I hope you found everything useful. We'll see you guys in the next video.